Link blocks are critical. Just like a button, a link block is a clickable thing that lets someone click to perform an action. It's a link, and it's a block. And they're a very powerful tool in web design and web development. We'll cover building a basic card where clicking anywhere inside its boundary will link people somewhere else. We'll show how to add a button inside a link block. There's an important trick there. We'll set up a more advanced animation, a transition. We'll show how you can convert an existing design into a link block, that's very important. And finally, we'll apply these same concepts to making a clickable image. At the end of this, you'll be a Webflow certified link block expert. So let's get started in this project. And right now, this area, we have a grid here, a basic three column design, and we'll go over to the add panel. And here's where we can add a link block. We'll just drag one in, we'll drag the link block right into our grid. And that's it. Pretty boring so far. So let's name our class card. But it's still exactly as boring. And that's because link blocks are just like div blocks and that all they do is serve as a box, a rectangular thing that's essentially blank by default. But whatever you put inside a link block will automatically be turned into a link. So let's add some stuff to our link block. Let's add an image in our assets. We can drag in this image. We'll drag it right inside the link block we just added. And the reason we're using the navigator here is it helps make sure we're placing things really precisely. We're putting the image inside the link block. That looks okay for now. Let's add a heading. Since the image is selected and we're working in the link block, we're just going to open up Quick Find to speed things up. We could also hit Command D on Mac OS or Control E on Windows to do this with the keyboard shortcut. We're just going to start typing heading and we'll hit enter. Then we can double click to edit the heading. Let's call this one flowers since the corresponding picture is a flower. And to add a paragraph, it's the same thing again. Command D or Control E on Windows, par, which are the first three letters of paragraph, enter. Now, notice how by default things inside the link block are styled like links, underlined and blue. If we select our link block, we can make these changes. We don't have to change the heading or the paragraph manually. We can just go over to typography in our link block and turn off text decoration. That removes the underline and change our text color. Maybe we can select a darker gray, kind of a slate color. That's part one, except it isn't because we're missing one critical piece. Where does the link take us? Currently, nowhere. With our link block selected, we can click the tiny cog icon thing in the link block here, or we can just go to the element settings and we can link out anywhere. URL, a separate page, a section on the current page, send an email, call a phone number, open a file attachment, or open a Zoom call to view Greamer's laptop's camera. For us, we'll link to another page in our project, which we can select from the dropdown. And if we go to preview, or if we were to publish our project, anyone who clicks anywhere inside the boundary of our link block will be taken to that separate page. That's creating a clickable link block card thing. How do we add a button? Let's go over to the add panel and let's drag in a button, except when we try and do that, it doesn't let us do that. The reason is pretty straightforward. We can't put a link inside a link. This is officially documented basically everywhere on the internet. So let's abandon that idea. And instead, let's use a div block. We'll drag a div block into our link block. We can place it right underneath our paragraph. So it's still in the link block, but at the bottom. And we already know what happens. It's blank. It's just a blank box of nothing. Let's double click our div block to add some text. We'll type view project. Then once we're done, we'll tweak this design a bit. Now we could style this just like a button. We can set a background color. And once we do that, we can set a text color. But if we already have a button style, maybe we've used a button in other places throughout our project, we can delete, we can remove that existing class and we can apply that existing one here. That's the thing about classes. Elements of all types can inherit styles you've used on other stuff. But that's it. That's adding a button to a link block, which looks like a button but isn't a button. Is this a good practice? Maybe not so much. Keep in mind, while screen readers will see our link block as a link, they're not going to see this div block as a button. It's kind of a placebo button. In fact, screen readers will ignore a div block's styling altogether. So it's worth considering how you want your design not only to appear, but how you want it to function. For us, we're going to remove that button. And then perhaps oddly enough, cut back to a screen that says we just covered making a card that has a button. But let's move to the next part, animated transitions. And this can be really beautiful and pretty quick to do visually. 
Let's first adjust our spacing. With the link block selected, let's add some padding. We can do this on all sides at once by clicking and dragging while holding down shift. And padding creates space inside an element's boundaries, inside our link block. And the reason we want to do that is this. If we go over to our hover state, in the drop down here, we can access our hover state. We can make three changes here. Actually, we can change everything, but we'll just change the background color. We can make this a uh, solid white color. Second, we'll add a drop shadow. We can do this by adding a shadow to the box, a box shadow. Then we can tweak this however we want. The goal here is to give the link block a little bit of visual lift, a visual differentiation that's defined by the contrast added by the shadow relative to the white background color of the link block upon the body. Now, if you're confused by that sentence, you're not the only one. So is Greamer. What? But once we've added our box shadow, we can do the third and final thing on Hover. We can actually move up the whole link block to really give it that extra visual lift. And we can transform our link blocks upwards. Remember, in the box model, this is how browsers render actual pages, a negative Y value means things move up. And when we do this, we've completed our third goal on Hover. And if we test this, if we go out of hover mode, back to none, we can see all three of those things change on hover. Background color, box shadow, and moving up a few pixels. So how do we animate that? We can interpolate between these frames by adding three quick transitions. And we'll add them for the same things. We'll add a transition for background color, and we can select that from the list and keep the default 200 milliseconds value. 0.2 seconds. We can always change this later. We'll do the same. We're adding another for box shadow. This is going to animate the box shadow transition. And finally, we'll do the same for transform. We'll add a transition which eases that abrupt jump between our default none style and the hover style. And once we've added those, what does it look like? You'll have to cut back to the screen, Dylan. And when he does, you'll see the button animates over 200 milliseconds. And that's it for part three. Part four, this is the quickest section so far. If we have a link block and we no longer want it to be a link block, we can just right click on it. Sometimes the easiest way to do this is to right click the label itself and we'll just convert our link block to a div block. Done. Now, what if we designed a card that looks like this, exactly what we see on the screen, and suddenly we decide it should be a link? Right click, convert to link block. Now it's a link. That's part four. Part five is one of those things that's a basic concept, but it's really empowering when we're trying to create clickable or tappable images. Here's a blank page with an image element in the center. How do we make it a link? Let's go over and drag in a link block. We'll just drag it next to the image, and then we'll drag the image in the link block. Now that link block is sized by the image. The image is defining the dimensions of our new link block. And just as importantly, that means our image is clickable. Is it really? Well, practically, yes. But technically, it's the link block we're clicking and the image has to be inside. But nobody will ever know the difference. Except anyone watching or listening to this recording, or anyone who's studied computer science, or web design, or web development, or heavy CNC machinery. And to make an image a link, put the image inside a link block. Alternatively, you can drag a link block into a blank page, same thing here, this time it's just a link block, and we'll give it some dimensions for this example, 300 pixels by 300 pixels. And we can set the background image on this link block. Let's go in and do that. And we can change our image to anything we want. And now it's a background image inside a link block. Is it weird? Yes, because it's tiled. Could we set it to cover and could we center it? Well, we just did. But remember, it's a link. It's not going anywhere until you tell it to go somewhere. But that's it. That's a lot we covered. Some of it practical, gripping, and inspiring. Mainly the parts where we cut to Greamer. Remember, we can use link blocks just like div blocks. But anything you put inside a link block becomes a link. We can add buttons, but not really real buttons. We can add animated transitions. We can convert a link block to a div block and the other way around. And finally, we can put images in a link block or even set background images on a link block to make an image a clickable link. Can we use link blocks for more? Of course we can, but Stacy's producing this video. And if we go on for too long, she'll make sure it ends abruptly.